intelligence. I said it's unintelligent behavior. You said it's a lack of creative, um, lack of creativity, which is actually both. You know, it it just shows a lack of creativity on the part of educators and teachers yeah. if they cannot. And and that's why I really uh, I asked them if you know which we didn't kind of answer, um, if there are other ways, you know, to discipline a child. We need to think of other ways to actually discipline a child. But we mm -hmm. have our guest with us, finally. <laughs> yes, we have our guest with us this morning. She is Bola Ojo. Yes. She's a teacher and an educator. She will be breaking down this conversation on corporal punishments in school this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Bola. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Good thank, morning to you. Good morning. You. Thank well, you so much for joining us. You're doing a good job. Thank, thank you. you. Very much. Thank you very that. much, Bala. So uh, let's jump into the conversation on corporal punishment this morning. Do you subscribe? You are a teacher, you're an educator, and I'm um, um, guessing that you're very active in the practice in Nigeria. Do you subscribe to corporal punishment and why? If you do or if you don't, why? Okay, um, corporal punishment is not actually um, the right way to go. So um, a lot of time I don't subscribe to it. The only time you can um, subscribe to a form of um, corporal punishment is not even uh, corporal punishment per se. Is when it is um, age appropriate and um, it is planned. It is not done in anger, and it is not done to inflict pain or injury on a child or a person. So that, to me, is not even a corporal punishment, because when you're carrying out corporal punishment, you're going to be inflicting injury or pain on a child. Yeah. So that there are ways of correcting a child that is age-appropriate, and it is planned, it is not done out of um, anger or, or kind of frustrated situation. And um, it is not done to bring pain and injury to a child. Mm. Mm. All right. Okay. So, you know, taking all of this into consideration, is it, would you consider it an act of child abuse? Oh, so, and, and any form of punishment that causes um, or inflicts uh, mm. physical pain or injury on a child is definitely an abuse mm. because it's going to diminish the child's cognitive ability. Yes, it is a form of abuse mm. because when you inflict injury on a child, definitely that's an abuse. That's a physical abuse on a child. Mm. When you cause pain and that will end up um, causing some kind of um, affecting a child's cognitive ability, oh, that's sure an abuse. Yeah. That's an abuse. All right. So taking that into consideration, how that we've outlined that we've, you know, outlined that it's actually child abuse. Um, and I like the fact that you're mentioning the cognitive effects that this can have on a child. Let's talk about the effects, the negative effects that corporal punishment can have on a child, this form of child abuse. Um, can you list out some? So, for instance, what forms of cognitive effects or defects can, co can, can corporal punishment have on a young person, on a child? Okay, definitely, um, corporal punishment have a lot of effect on a child. Some are immediate, some are maybe later on in the future. Um, it can be, some people see it as being effective, corporal punishment being effective, but its effectiveness is just a short term. It is, it's just immediate. They can comply immediately. When you flog a child, they can comply immediately. But that, 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 will, res that will result to physical maltreatment. Mm. But when we're looking at the negative effect of um, corporal punishment, number one, it will cause pain and injury on the, the particular child or the person. Okay. Then, um, then the, there will be a form of regret on the part of a teacher. When you inflict injury on a child, definitely you're going to regret that action mm. because it is not planned. So there, there's, there's going to be a regret on the part of um, the teacher and the child will always be violent. You see, we, we have a lot of children these days that come to hit their, their mates in class, that come to bully their children. And this is the effect. They see violence as the way out. So when you, you inflict all of this injury on the child, they see it, oh, when I, 
when someone does anything to me, I'm going to hit back. So they see it as a kind of way out, and they get to be aggressive and mm. violent in every of their things, uh, every of their dealings with their their pets. Then there's going to be poor teacher and student relationship. Mm. The child will always be scared. So we, we grew up knowing some of our mathematics teachers always coming up with K, and some of us don't get to do well in mathematics. Yes. Because we don't like the teacher. Mm -hmm. Because the teacher is always Actually. talking. So it, it's going to mar the relationship between the teacher and um, the pupil. And uh, in the long run, there will be failure, there will be depression, the environment is no longer safe for the child. You see some children crying to come to school As because their teacher will always be violent with them. Mm -hmm. And in the long run, some people even dropped out in school while we were in school. Yeah. Because, yes, it, it will lead to a high rate of dropouts in school because they're, they're always scared of school. Some would tell their parents they are leaving home for school, but they'll never get to school because their, their teachers are always beating. Their teachers are always flogging and all of that. Mm -hmm. And it will create phobia. Some children will grow up having phobia for yeah. teachers, for school environment, even thinking and all of that. Yeah. Mm. All right. Um, I love that you were able to list all of these negative effects, especially on um, students in school, and especially that part where you talked about the high rates of students dropping out and then also phobia and fear, because we believe that an educator is that person that is coloring the child's world and if the child is in fear then they would not learn anything but what are the um, alternative methods that teachers or educators can use in um discipline i don't even know if the word should be discipline mm. or giving punishments to students so as they can learn better what are the other creative ways that you know a teacher can help that student be a better student instead of corporal punishments Oh, okay, thank you very much. A teacher going to class every day should be well prepared, should have self, what we call self-control, should be prepared for trouble. The children will always make trouble. The children will always come up with a lot of things. So the first thing a teacher should have is um, self-control. Violence is not always the way out. Mm -hmm. Between a child is not always the way out. There are other alternatives. Number one, you can start with rewarding good behavior. I'll tell you, even the bad child in class, the so-called bad class, the bad child in class, has a good aspect. So start by praising and um, commending that good part of the child. And you see that by the time you are mentioning the bad child of the child, the child already has the confidence in you that, oh, you praised this good part. Definitely, you should know the bad part. So the child will try as much as possible to work on the bad part to make sure the child, he or she is getting that commendation from you at all times. So it is always good as teachers to always reward good behavior. Then other methods of um, correcting these children as I flogging, Mm. Hello. Making them lose okay. privileges. Yeah. yeah. When others are going out to play, you are not going to go. Taking out some privileges from them, the younger ones. When others are watching TV, definitely you will not be. So you take some. When others are having short break, definitely you are not going to because of this attitude of yours and all of that. Then the younger ones, like the ones in nursery, will make them face naughty corners, and. By the time all of the friends are seeing them facing the naughty corner, they feel so sober. Is a corner anyone does not want to go. So you have to be well behaved in class not to be at the naughty corner because you will be seen as a naughty person. Then the most important thing in life, in the classroom, in their lives as children, is make rules with them. Don't make these rules for them. Come together as a class with the children make these rules. They will tell you, oh, no littering of the floor. Okay, what do we do to anyone that litter, mm. litters the floor? They will also come up with the punishment. So mm. you're, coming, you're coming up with the rules together with them, coming up with the punishment together. So when they are, they are falling short of these rules, they know, oh, we made the rules. So I have to, even without telling them, oh, what's the punishment for anyone that litters the class? Or oh, the person is going to pick the deck around the class for a whole week. So you don't even need to tell the person. The person just begins. So it's, it's not all about 
beating, um, inflicting injury in children and all of that, then we can also use calm words, always speak to them, counsel them, talk to them. Because in the long run, when you're beating and flogging and smacking, uh, you, you're definitely affecting the child's um, self-esteem. Then it's always um, important that we hear these children out. Okay. It's good we hear them out. You don't even know what they're passing through for them coming up with all of these actions. So we need to be the friends. We need to give them attention. We need to hear them. We need to hear their own side of the story a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you finish flogging a child and you now get to listen, you, you now regret why you even um, spanked the child in mm -hmm. the first place. All right. Some parents believe that, you know, um, using alternative punishments instead of corporal punishment doesn't work. Like, uh, oh, you facing the naughty corner, or you mm. going to detention. They just feel like maybe it would breed more delinquents. I mean, we had um, a caller say that it doesn't work. In fact, that's one of the reasons why we have a lot of young people that are unruly in the nation at the moment. So I, I want to ask you, do you think it doesn't work? That's one. And also, secondly, what if... Is there is there a time where the cane should be introduced when you know you've tried all your th all, all the alternatives and and it didn't work? I think that's the last question. Is there a, is there a time where the cane or the rod, as the, the proverbial rod, should be introduced? Or, you know when alternative punishments doesn't work? Yes, definitely. You, you don't have the right to inflict injury on your pupil, mm. it, it is very prohibited. You don't have the right as a teacher, even these days as a parent, to inflict injury on your pupil. No. It is punishable under the law. You, you cannot inflict physical, in the form of physical abuse on a child. So that is not, it is not allowed. It is punishable under the law. We here as teachers don't have the right to inflict injury or to carry out um, um, proper punishment on, on children. Although some people still fall victim, but it's not the right thing to do. Mm. Punishable to yeah. mm. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, thank Bola, for joining much. us this morning. You have enlightened us, and we want to um, thank you for sharing your knowledge and your time with us. Um, have yourself a lovely day. Thank you very much. Thank you very All much. All right. We just had a conversation with Bola Ojo. She is a teacher. And the conversation is on corporal punishment in school. We're asking questions. Is it necessary? What happens when you beat a child or you inflict mm. pains on children? What happens when you, um, instead of having a conversation with them, instead of giving alternatives mm. to this sort of punishments, what then happens? Does it even work? Yeah. Now, according to what Bola has told us today, she has said that it is not even your right yeah. as a teacher to beat a pupil or yeah. a student. It is punishable and it's an offense for yeah. you to do that. So it means, I mean, you know, we were talking earlier oh, yeah. when we we're taking facts that yeah. um, it is, it has been banned in different countries that you that shouldn't. Means Nigeria is also on this list. I am guessing, so yeah. it's something that so we need to confirm. Yeah. Yeah. So that means that if it's, it's in the constitution, that the constitution does not allow for this anymore. And I think Femi even pointed it out when yeah. he called. Yeah. So that means that it is still within the culture of Nigeria. Legally, it's not allowed. Mm -hmm. But culturally, it seems permissible. Yeah. So that is the problem with corporal punishment. You know, I really, I think, I like the fact that she highlighted the effects and defects that corporal punishments can have on a person's learning, you know? Yeah. That's it. And it just... It just made me realize that some people, when they drop out of school, you know, we, we, we said something about dyslexic um, students, students with atten attention deficit disorder, ADHD, and whatnot. Um, some, of this, some of this, even in the UK, some of these um, students that have these things, um, they drop out of school because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult for them to learn. So, and when you're not, when the learning is not personalized for their condition, it becomes a problem. And for difficult, yeah, you know, um, I had a friend with dyslexia, you know, as I, I think I've even used him as a case study on this on this program before. Um, he's doing wonderful things now in his career. He's a marketing executive in a very big um, brand, you know, worldwide brand. So um, it does not mean that the child is not good for anything. It just means that his education needs to be somewhat different. 
from the average or normal um, students that you're not even normal. No, no one is every not day. You understand? Yeah. From the average every day students. school, the traditional yes, learning. You know, yeah. So that it just means that, that the way that learning, um, the way the way that students or child is learning has to be different. Yeah. So you know, um, I really like that she actually outlined the effects and defects of corporal punishment, so that. So that people who are at home and watching and who don't really understand why we're having this conversation can begin to see why we, it is actually important for you to maybe if, you know, as a teacher, as a parent, maybe for you to start to rethink your position on corporal punishment. Um, and, you know, on Tea or Coffee, and I think I'm speaking for both of us when I say this, we don't stand um, with corporal punishment. No. We, we, we don't stand with the idea of causing physical harm to a young person because they have made a mistake, they made an error, or because they don't understand what you're teaching in classes. There are intelligent and creative ways you can actually get through to children only if you choose to actually indulge them. Indulge them and you will actually be able to get through to them. Because, you know, I think we're even talking about children that, you know, the thing about children, like, I mean, like, you know, like the two, three-year-olds, toddlers, um, when you indulge them, you are actually able to um, learn a lot from them. Yes. And, and you yes. know, that's what they really want. They want, they, they want to talk to adults, but they want to have... <laughs> They want to have adult conversations, make them feel yeah, like, okay, so we're know, on the same level. I know them. so much. Indulge them mm -hmm. because when you indulge them from this age, you're allowing them to be creative. You're allowing them to learn dialogue. You're allowing them to learn communication. You're allowing them to learn expression. These things are very important. So same thing with teachers in, you know, secondary school spaces and primary school spaces. Indulge the students. Don't, uh, you know, it, it, it don't just be be um, causing physical harm on a child that is not even yours in the first place. You know, we didn't even mention that point. You're not the one that birthed this child and you, like, you somehow found it okay to be inflicting body harm on them. God knows if it's my child. It's, <laughs> that's my, okay. Let's, okay. Let's, let's okay, so um, <laughs> inflicting pain on other people's children is... A very bad. In fact, yeah. inflicting pain on your children is another conversation yeah. that, that we should we, yeah. get into I very think to soon. Get, to bring parents into the conversation. Yes, we, so we are definitely have, going yeah. to talk about corporate punishments at home. Yeah. You know, where parents, aunties, uncles, family members are the ones that we're now picturing yeah. instead of teachers and yeah. educators. In fact, we were focusing majorly on secondary and primary school. Yeah. We didn't even do so much on tertiary, tertiary. institution because it is. It's absurd. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, ridiculous. it's a ridiculous <laughs> conversation, really, yes, for yeah. tertiary institutions that are also employing the use of corporal punishments, yeah. and nothing is being done. But anyways, just to wrap up this conversation, we want to say that, yeah, like Adi has already mentioned, that there are other creative ways that you can you know, speak to a child. There are other creative ways that you can help a child grow and help them learn. It's unfair that a parent is paying so much money as tuition fees and that child is not learning anything because you are meting out punishments and you're making them learn in fair. Mathematics teachers, yes. I am talking to you. <laughs> a lot of art students didn't know mathematics, not because they're not intelligent, not because they're not smart, but because you have made it very difficult for them to learn. You've made, um, you know, classes very hard because yeah. you're always bringing Cain Learning to, under the yeah, aura of fear. Learning under pressure and yes. so much yes. fear. And also school management, if you are still allowing teachers to beat their students, I think it is an, it's, it's a good time for you to check it again. It's a good time for you to, you know, look into how you can be more creative in, you know, punishing if that's what you want to do or meting out some sort of discipline for your students. Bringing Kane to class is really a no-no. The moment I see Kane, I am already scared. Yeah, yeah. That, okay, so today yes. we're in trouble. Some people do, uh, they bring two canes. We still have one teacher that will, that will tie mm. two canes together just to flog us. Mm. It's, it, I mean, one is not even enough. You're yeah, bringing two. two. <laughs>